Emory King presents World Class Detroiters. Tonight, one of the world's great writers of crime fiction, the author of 41 novels, Elmore Leonard prompts fans worldwide to reach for superlatives. A product of Detroit's Catholic school, for years he worked alone in a room to hone a style that lets him disappear. Loved by Hollywood, his stories tell us who we are. Tonight, a special look at the man they call Dutch. Still spinning taut, funny, and frightening tales at the ripe and productive age of 81. Hello, I'm Emory King with another edition of World Class Detroiters. Here are some of the things critics and reviewers have said about Detroit's own Elmore Leonard and his best-selling novels. His ear for dialogue is the best in the business. The most interesting author of crime fiction that we have ever had. A national literary treasure. The Dickens of Detroit. When a new Leonard book comes out, it's like Christmas morning. So welcome to Christmas in mid-May at the borders on Woodward and Birmingham, just minutes from Elmore Leonard's home. He's on a book tour with stops that include New York, Philadelphia, St. Louis, and L.A. Tonight, he'll be signing his new one up in Honey's room for the hometown folks. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Elmore Leonard. The night Vincent was shot, he saw it coming. The guy approached out of the streetlight on the corner of Meridian and 16th, South Beach, and reached Vincent as he was walking from his car to his apartment building. It was early, a few minutes past nine. Vincent turned his head to look at the guy, and there was a moment when he could have taken him and did consider it. A typical Leonard Open, jump right into the middle Vincent of things with just the right clothes. details. He wasn't gonna drop a half gallon of uh, Gallo Hardy Burgundy, a bottle of prune juice, and a jar of ragu spaghetti sauce on the sidewalk. Not a cool cop playing it too cool and nearly him getting himself killed to, to open a tale that will take us from Florida to Puerto Rico to Atlantic on. City. The guy was not big. He was scruffy, wore a tank top and biker boots and smelled. Someone in the New York Times called you the greatest crime writer of our time, perhaps ever. How does, how does praise like that make you feel? The problem is that it gives reviewers something to disagree with. And they will spend time disagreeing. Instead of reviewing a book, they'll spend most of the space uh, naming writers that they think are better, at least in, in some particular way. Does that bother you? For a little bit. I mean, <laughs> it shouldn't, it shouldn't, but uh, I read all my reviews, you know, and I'm looking for good reviews. But to say that I'm the best, I don't think we should be in competition that way. Up in Honey's room, originally I was going to call it Hitler's birthday. <laughs> and uh, I told my publisher, my editor said, you're kidding, Hitler's birth. Hitler doesn't sell anymore. Elmore started with westerns more than a half century ago, and when that genre began drying up in the 70s, he moved on to crime novels, usually set in Detroit. Filled with gritty details, dead on dialogue, and the uncanny ability to channel various criminal types, books like 52 Pickup, Swag, and Unknown Man Number 89 brought him a kind of cult following. Then, in the 80s, with City Primeval, Split Images, Stick, La Brava, and Glitz, his popularity got serious. In 1985, he made the cover of Newsweek, and from then on, every new book would hit the bestseller lists. The settings and locations now were usually South Florida, where Elmore had often spent time with his family in the winter months. On the movie front, they have finished shooting 310 to Yuma, which was shot originally, I think, in 1956 or 7. Hollywood had always been interested in Elmore, and vice versa. Some good movies were made from his Western story, including 310 to Yuma with Glenn Ford and Ombre with Paul Newman. But it took Tinseltown a long time to get Elmore's crime books right. It wasn't until the 90s when talented directors took on books like Get Shorty and Out of Sight that films based on his novels were both a popular and critical success. Director Quentin Tarantino made Rum Punch into Jackie Brown, perhaps the best adaptation yet. I'm not saying another word. Jackie, I hope you don't mind if I call Jackie. So what is it about readers and crime? They're drawn into crime 
and uh, mysteries because these stories always have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the endings are always satisfying to the readers. They know that the good guys are going to win in the end. Your major characters are usually trying to outduel each other or engage themselves in a battle of wits between good and evil. Do you see it that way? I suppose when you get right down to it, if I were to analyze my stories, but, but for, for that matter, all stories are about good and evil. Call it a face-off, a showdown, a duel. Elmore's stories often end with a lethal confrontation between oh, his no, good guy no, and no, bad guy. It might sound like the clash of frontier gunslingers, but you it's won't there. find it in the westerns you know, he used so to write. I never had the two guys meet in the street because it, it never happened. I mean, if somebody wanted to shoot somebody in Tombstone, he found him in the bar and walked in and shot him. They don't say, let's, let's go out and count to three, you know. About your bad guys, you've said this. I don't think of them as bad guys. I just think of them as normal people who get up in the morning, wonder what they're going to have for breakfast, and they sneeze, <coughs> and then they wonder if they should call their mother, and then they rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, that's really most of them. I mean, that's the way it is, you know. There's a guy in the paper this morning who robbed a bank because he was at the, he had been let go from his job and he robbed a bank and, and uh, the prosecutor, uh, Gorsica, was going to give him less than a year. Now he's got a job offer and people feel sorry for him. When we come back, how a little boy who liked to play with guns turned into a world-class novelist.